my pleasure. And as I said, I've now joined as a subscriber. It's an honor for me uh, uh, to get your uh, uh, subscription. Well, it's a pleasure to to be interacting, albeit uh, remotely across great distances, right? Yeah, it's too far. We live too far. And <laughs> so I've gone through a profile. I can see uh, you have done a lot of work uh, uh, for the society and for especially uh, in the field of education. So I thought to tell about uh, your work to my audience and to the world who is watching this uh, uh, conversation and who is listening to this conversation in any platform uh, from any part of this world. So um, education has been my life and my passion. I guess I would say I have uh, a long, long career and um, the two things that drive me in education are that balance of excellence and equity. So places around the world focus on one or the other, but one of the things that makes Ontario and Canada unique um, is that that we do both so that we're paying attention to students and families who are underserved, but that on uh, platforms like uh, PISA, the Program of International Student Assessment, Ontario and Canada score very high, along with places like Finland and South Korea and Singapore. And our children of poverty and our immigrant children score high. And I know that um, when I was reading your bio, um, that education was important to you. So education has been very important to me as I progress from a high school teacher to an administrator to the Ministry of Education as a school inspector to a superintendent to the university. That is what's been driving me, is how do we make education more engaging for those students who are disengaged? So uh, before, before talking more about you and the work that you have done and the contribution that you have did uh, to, the, to the country and to the world, uh, I just want to mention that I'm coming to Canada, uh, you know, in January. <laughs> Perfect. We will connect. Where are you? Where in Canada are you coming? Uh, to Ontario. Perfect. Then, then, Sat, for sure, we will connect and you are invited for dinner. Thank you very much. Uh, that's a, that's a big thing. And, uh, the, the purpose uh, that I'm mentioning this because, uh, I'm coming for education uh, for uh, 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 for a post-graduation course. I have applied for a couple of colleges, Loyalist and uh, Conestoga College. So I'm waiting for the uh, admission acceptance. That's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So now, uh, before that, I'm talking with a person who is already uh, uh, doing great things in education. So I thought to tell about uh, how education is impacting humans and how you are uh, uh, making this education to reach uh, to every person in your life. So can you can you uh, tell what you have done uh, by introducing yourself? So my my background uh, began as a high school teacher. But I think from the time I was very little, I'm the older sister of younger brothers, I wanted to be a teacher. And I was fortunate to have wonderful high school teachers. And so um, I have a master's degree in history and a master's degree in geography, and I taught both. But as I said, what drives me is making sure we provide an education 
for students and families where that may not have been their pathway. Um, and especially um, the issue of young men in education, because often young men are disengaged. The system isn't set up uh, focused on them. And uh, from Canadian statistics, and it would be the same anywhere in the world, the big issue is getting kids to graduate high school. That's the bottom line. And if you don't graduate high school, and we're not even talking earning ability, um, you're going to die earlier, you're going to be less healthy, you're unlikely to be a regular voter, you're less likely to be involved in your community, you're less likely to send your kids to kindergarten, and they're less likely to graduate high school. So high school graduation becomes a critical factor. And uh, much of my work in the ministry was around providing the supports to schools and students so that we could boost that education rate. And in Ontario, it's currently around 85% of all students who start school in grade nine, whether they're from families of poverty, immigrant children, children with special needs within five years graduate. And, and um, students with special needs are near and dear because I'm a neurodiverse. I'm learning disabled myself. So I, I know what those struggles are. So uh, uh, you started uh, your education in uh, uh, history and geography, which is completely different subjects. Today you are, uh, you are, you are trying to help uh, a lot of people uh, to get educated. So how do you define uh, the older days that you have studied uh, the education system in that time is different from today's education system? It become a, a virtual thing. So it, um, it was paper and pencil. Uh, the teacher talked, we listened. There was very little student voice. Uh, families weren't so important. You know, there weren't many voices at the decision-making table. And technology has been transformational. I could not have done my doctorate in educational leadership if I had to have written it because I, I'm an abysmal speller and my handwriting is horrible. So technology is transformational. And to be able now to access the world through your fingertips, to um, I've done work internationally and to be able to interact with colleagues in Norway, in Chile, in the Dominican Republic instantaneously. Um, you know, these are our gifts. And today, as part of the curriculum in Ontario, is coding. And, you know, we understand the importance of making sure that in that equity piece, technology is part of that equity piece, that they have access to uh, a digital device and access to reliable high-speed internet. Because for parts of the province, high-speed regular internet is, is not there in rural and remote places. So that equity divide remains. And I know that's true in India as well. Exactly. So what are those values you always teach to uh, the students and uh, that they need to have in order to be well educated? So um, uh, with colleagues recently, we um, just finished a chapter that was published by Springer in a book about global competency. And so that that really is so not only 
do we want students that are literate and numerate, but we also want students who are critical thinkers, who can collaborate. When I used to ask uh, major corporations, what is it you want of this, the education system in terms of future employees and leaders, they said they needed people who would work in teams to move an agenda forward. We need students to be aware of issues of, of racism, of discrimination, and, and to understand complexities, to, um, to be able to deal with issues around climate change. Um, because every day we open the paper and there are earthquakes, typhoons, um, you know, the those issues and the issues of international politics. So the global competencies that OECD talks about, those are the pieces that we're embedding into the curriculum so that students also are uh, financially literate. No one ever talked about those issues when, when I went to school, but students need not only to be able to access the internet, but to decide is that site a valid site? Is the information information that is reasonable or is it disinformation? And so um, this is why teaching and learning today are, uh, are rocket science. So tell me how you uh, got educated and uh, who helped you to uh, be educated today? Well, um, so I, my, my father was a pharmacist, so he had gone to university. Um, my mother was a child of the Depression and an immigrant. Uh, she came from the Ukraine as a young girl. And so the assumption was that I and my brothers all would go to university and we all ended up with doctorates. My youngest brother, a urologist, the middle brother, a PhD in robotic engineering and I'm the educator. Mine was in educational leadership. And um, although I had to work harder because I'm learning disabled, I was highly motivated. And in the long run, I think learning to work harder and smarter makes you a better administrator and school leader and gives you more empathy for students and families that find it challenging. And so I'm educated in Toronto and through the University of Toronto. So I, I've taught at um, uh, what was the Ontario University um, UOIT uh, of Technology, now the Ontario University of Technology, Western, and um, OISE UT. So I, I've taught also a little bit at the post-secondary level. So you worked in different uh, fields. So how is that experience? Well, it, it, the Working in education um, today has to be a collective endeavor. So whether you're working post-secondary or you're working K-12, kindergarten through grade 12, um, working today is working in a team. And so those team skills are, are really what drive learning forward. And there's a lot of political interference in that whole issue of education, as you know. So uh, uh, you have a lot of experience in education. So 
how 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 do you define education how this education is helping human to uh, develop himself and uh, be uh, you know uh, know the purpose of uh, his life well i think we are naturally curious and um as a species conditioned to learning and learning with others and so what education does is stretch you as a person and reinforce your connectivity to the people around you to your community but also to that global world and so that part of what we want you to do is to um end up with a degree of self efficacy and understanding your skills and talents and and being an advocate um but also beginning to think about how can i give back to like where where are those possibilities and opportunities and um education becomes then transformational for society so what do you like in yourself uh, you uh, a student in yourself or uh, a leader in yourself um i love uh, if 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 they have a definition in the dictionary on learning there's my picture i love to learn i will learn anything any time and i take lots of webinars and courses i just find learning fascinating i'm told by people that i worked with my teams that i'm very very good building leaders so i see possibilities in others and i feel that that's part of my role to support others to become whatever they would like to be and i'm heavily networked so that um it became very obvious to me early on i didn't have to know everything or even a lot of things as long as i knew people who knew those things and i could reach out to and so i still am heavily connected to my networks and what do you like uh, more uh, in the work that you are doing the possibilities of 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 change and differences so two i'll give you two examples i'm working with now um i do volunteer work in the dominican republic um the dominican republic education system is not very good on pisa they were dead last dead last is not very good when you're looking at international score and children of wealth and privilege do well but children whose families are poor and uneducated do not so how do you work to make the society that educational experience more equitable so part of what um the group that i do volunteer work we do is we go down and ontario educators work with dominican educators so that the teachers have more skills and resources the principals have more skills and resources and the system leaders have more skills and resources so that more students can be touched by the possibilities of education and they don't leave school before they have a high school diploma the other group that i'm doing some work with now and and that's my deep honor and privilege is with our first nations some of the first nation communities who um through the residential school systems where the young children were taken away from the families not allowed to speak their language live their culture um 
it was a form of genocide. Um, the communities have um, moving towards decolonization, that re sense of renewal and I'm able to do a little bit of work with their school systems also again in 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 making uh, uh building the responsiveness and the connectivity because they have all the tools they need to succeed in the world so those would be two examples and in both cases I play a very little part as part of a team and the lead voices on the table are the communities being served. Uh, my job is service, my job is not leadership. So in this vast experience of your life, uh, how do you define this evolution of education in human life? Well, I, as I said, yeah, the, what education for me is the great possibilities and opportunities. So not only do we want you to be the best you can be, but even better than you envision. And uh, for me, education is the way to unpack that. Um, and, and that's why I want as many people to many students to have as a successful and engaging. I want them to like and, and want to learn. Because if you like learning, you want to learn, and you're literate, then, then the world is yours. You know, whether it's digital learning or paper learning, it, it doesn't matter because then you have curiosity and the ability to grow. So as a leader, what kind of changes yeah, that uh, you did to the education system? Um, the first would be more voices at the table. So um, one of the things when I worked, um, my school district was 75,000 kids in 125 schools, the Durham District School Board, and was one of those school boards noted by the Bertelsmann Foundation as an innovative school board. Um, we did a lot of surveying of students. What do they like? What don't they like? We also looked at results and said, okay, these are schools doing well, these are schools not doing well. And then we would have focus groups with the students and ask them. Um, in some of our schools of poverty, the initial complaint was parents were coming in when it was parent teacher night. And for a lot of the parents, for me, South Oshawa, multi-generational uh, social assistance, uh, lack of education. Uh, school was not a pleasant place for those parents. So we switched our meetings into public housing and provided food and babysitting and, and met people where they were. So the big change was instead of saying, we're the school and we know everything, we said, you're the first teachers. The community is where students live and grow. Kids are the, the demanders of the service. And so they must all have voices. Um, and so a lot, I did a lot of work around being visible and making sure that there were many voices at the table shaping decision making. And what are the things that you want to do in order to make uh, each and every person that you see or that you know to become an educator? I, I think um, we have to understand um, more about how the digital world 
world is going to interplay in a world that that's where our students are grounded. And so we're beginning to unpack that better, including AI and how that's going to be transformational. And um, to understand that when students have issues learning, uh, for me, the issue is glasses. So I say a teacher would never say to students, I'm going to put something up on the board or show something on a screen. And if you're wearing glasses or contact lenses, take them off because it's going to be fair. And so everything that students need, if um, they have issues of hearing, if they're on the autism spectrum, if um, they need more time, all of those things are glasses. And so how do we provide the glasses so that students can learn to be who their possibilities are? And um, and then how can we better serve communities so that communities understand that schools serve communities, communities don't serve schools. So education means there are a lot of aspects which are connected with it. Uh, the, uh, the politics, the, the parents and uh, the teachers and uh, the neighbors, everyone. So how they are going to contribute and uh, uh, impact on this education and education system? You invite them in. You have meetings either in the community or in the school. You have surveys to get their opinion. Uh, you hold focus groups. Those are the te techniques. And um, to understand that there's not a clear roadmap. There's, I mean, if it was that simple, we'd all do it. And it's complex. It's, it's like, um, it's like jazz. There's a script, but you're constantly improvising the script. I mean, that's what good teaching is. And so, um, if you're tracking the data, and you're looking at areas you're doing well in and areas you're not, and the community is telling you what are for them the challenges. And of course, in Ontario, there's multiple communities. There's not a community. Then, then we're better at, at, at serving because education is about serving so that the next generation um, has opportunities and possibilities that that we didn't have. And uh, change is constant. So how education can be uh, uh, can be can be uh, made accessible for everyone? Technology is a huge um, game changer. Um, and so the more skilled um, teachers are, uh, the more they're working together. And so we know clearly from the research, if you want a transformational education system, teachers have to be working together. The, the administration has to be part of that learning journey. And um, they have to, from very young, um, nurture curiosity in students. Because if, if students are curious, if they are um, risk takers, if they understand that when they don't succeed, that's, that's a learning experience. Um, and that we learn from it. And so what you do is you're reshifting the entire system to look upon that learning experience differently. And, and as I said, for me, technology has been transformational. 
so the psychology of the student uh, uh, or a child depends on the social world so how social world should get educated in order to make that child to uh, become an expert in in a particular subject in in future so so part of it is making sure that um in those early years you're fostering um intentional play curiosity and literacy and numeracy because we know that in almost any language if a, a young person is not fluent reader in whatever language it is by a, uh, by grade 4 then we're going to have more issue um to know and to recognize that there are families that are underserved and they're going to need extra supports so um what what can we do to to do that and to make sure that from kindergarten which for us starts at age 4 issues like coding um scientific literacy um critical thinking skills those are all there from the beginning and so by the time students get older and they can look at a an issue in their community and bring that back into the classroom or they have a sense of they want to excel in the arts or in stem or whatever that the the schools have provided the foundations and the ability to interrogate and collaborate and it's a it, and it's not cheap education isn't cheap <laughs> so uh, you are the evidence uh, and uh, you are the uh, you have seen uh, uh, the 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 real world education and uh, the virtual world education so how do you define this and which one is going to uh, which one is beneficial and uh, which one uh, makes a uh, uh, human to learn and get information about different things uh, uh, faster and also uh, health is very important uh, for everyone so how they are going to manage with these mediums well uh, so that whole issue of social media now comes back into the schools and the classroom because um one of my nieces is a child psychiatrist and we know that covid and social media and other factors interacting we have more young people who are self harming who are anxious and depressed we we know that so the real world has to be part of the classroom and the school um the issues of social justice of of uh climate change and of well-being and mental health and there have to be supports in the schools for those kids who need extra so one of the things in one of my previous life i was working with we say were children who um the the issues they faced didn't allow them to fit in necessarily to a regular classroom those would be children both in custody in correctional institutions and um in other hospital setting and schools have to understand that we need the supports for for social well-being and 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 for students so that they can be served there and those are things that teachers and schools have to be discussing issues of anxiety depression um self identity and and that's as i keep saying you know teaching and learning is rocket science so technology products and technology services are helping uh, today 
to uh, spread the education and uh, uh, make people to uh, get information very fast from these uh, it can be twitter youtube or instagram or snapchat uh, the, all these are the platforms which are there in technology devices so there will be a lot of technology experts from all over the world especially from united states uh from headquarters who will be watching and listening to these conversation before uh before like 30 years or 40 years before the politicians used to decide how the education should be and how the education system should be but today technology is also uh technology experts and technology products and service provide providers also deciding how uh education should be reached uh, uh to uh, different parts of the world and to different human beings so uh, what do you uh, what do you tell to them when it comes to responsibility because they are the decision makers so you know again um it's a process and we're working together um the the impact of ai we probably won't really understand what another 5 10 years down the road some of those impacts but the world of uh, of digital literacy is a critical learning skill today and how do you bring students to be able to assess what's valid and what's not valid what are sites that they should be going to and what are sites that may disinform those sites are going to exist anyway we're not we're not in any way want to um to limit those sites what we want students to understand is how they need to be critical and self-aware and and when they see things on Instagram where everyone looks beautiful and having a wonderful time and they're depressed because that's not their world to understand that that's barbie land too right that and and so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of talking as i said of bringing the world in into the school and into the classroom recognizing that you know digital literacy the the world of of technology of ai those are our realities and and given that how do we grow together so i think you know technology and education are growing together as we're beginning to understand and unpack uh, as an expert do you believe that uh, digital literacy is going to replace human and human's knowledge i think it's going to help shape um so that I see it more and and I'm a huge fan of science fiction. So I I see it more as a partner. I'm not worried about you know being taken over by super computers who control our world. I I I think we will develop that type of partnership in adapt differently it it will shape us and we will shape it and what do you say about this global communication system that you are seeing today with the social media and social networks and with and these uh, technology products and services with which right now microsoft teams we are using in order to connect with canada from canada to india you know well that but i mean that connectivity is is real for me um it's the well-being issue so how how can we recognize that we have a lot of young people who are anxious who are depressed who are worried about their future partially shaped by what they perceive is happening 
in a digital environment, in an AI environment, which may or may not be real? Um, and how do we, in partnership with technology, um, you know, some very thoughtful work is being done by things like Bill Gates and Utopia and all of those things as as we work to help one another. Uh, because young people are the consumers of education and the consumers of technology. And, and so they're who we serve together. And the more that there's conversations back and forth, um, there's a lot of, I don't have to tell you, um, awful, horrible, scary stuff out on the internet. And we have to be and help students be better consumers. Gaming and gambling um, have led some kids astray and there has to be a balance and I have no answers, but to say it's it's a process and we have to collaborate and work together. Definitely your word reaches uh, your words reaches to to the technology experts who are responsible for that for sure uh, because uh, the top level uh, you know leaders will be listening to you. So what exactly that uh, you want them to think? when when it comes to these changes because as a technologist i'm, I'm also a, a, a devops guy i'm a devops engineer and also a cloud engineer a software developer i do these things so uh, uh, i'm curious what kind of advices or security measures that you want uh, these uh, technology experts to put in the artificial intelligence uh, you know educating uh, educative applications or softwares that is very important in order to uh, secure and be safe for these children and who are uh, uh, you know who are studying from the internet uh, uh, for their productive work what security things that you want uh, these technology experts to put in their mind when it comes to artificial intelligence so so under and i think they understand that um there's age appropriate sites that will shift. Um, the more, I mean, that whole issue of learning to read, um, it can be interactive and digitally um, supported and, and the sites that give, I mean, when you think of little ones, the creation of software that's interactive, that gives feedback and is real world, those, those are wonderful. As kids age, being uh, understanding that the global competencies and, and access to the world of information um, have to be there and how, like, what would their advice be in terms of how do you work with a school system to create informed users of the technology? Because there's so much possibilities and, and, and we're just at that beginning of that huge explosion. So, what what rather than me as an educator say to the digital world i would say digital world help me understand better how do we create informed consumers so one last thing uh, as a human beings uh, uh, we are uh, going out of the planet we are reaching to the moon and we are reaching to mars and we are reaching to uh, everywhere uh, you know uh, uh, outside the, the solar system 
so how do you define this ev- human evolution where we are going and what we are going to do uh, in coming 20 or 30 years with the education that we are uh, you know b- uh, getting and uh, building and also this internet is uh, 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 become the fast forward thing which is helping humans to learn things very fast in less time so in which time what we are going to do and what wonders that uh, uh, the next generations are going to see Well, you know, Chris Hadfield, the Canadian astronaut and was commander of the International Space Station, taught from the International Space Station, sang songs to kids. I mean, there will be a time, you know, with the Mars Space Project where lessons will come back to kids on Earth. We as a species I I don't think we have limits and I think because we're curious I I do see ourselves expanding beyond our our current even beyond our current solar system and you know we want to understand dark matter we want to understand black holes we want to understand all of this more and that that drive to understand and explore will take us beyond um absolutely and and to recognize surgeons are better surgeons if they learn gaming i mean that 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 to to appreciate we're learning quicker we're learning differently and our brains are adapting differently and then the other thing is um is to appreciate diversity one of canada's great gifts is that we are other than our first nation peoples we are a land of immigrants and being a land of immigrants makes us stronger the diversity um enhances us doesn't diminish us and if we are going to interact with other sentient entities we have to understand that really well so eventually the kids or the children who are studying and who are getting education uh, are going to work in some industry or in some company so how do you how do you tell them about their future keeping in their uh, keeping in their mind about their future what they are going to do uh in that particular industry or in that particular company uh with the education that they are get, getting today so uh are you telling them uh, ab- about the adaptation how they are going to adopt and how to adopt to the change that is happening and uh, how to change how to how, how to understand the diversity and uh, how to be flexible for everything uh, that is happening around them we're try and and part of it is bringing in real world experiences like where do you put the next subway station in the community and why um how do you deal with this problem that's being so you bring the real world into the classroom and you let the kids explore and you begin to give them a sense that that world is their world and that their curiosity their skills the the lessons they're learning in the school and in the classroom will will take them beyond and you know into into that world of work whatever that world of work will be for them and and recognizing they're going to be doing jobs so that have no name or title right now and you know what could be more exciting so what what words that you want to tell to the leaders who will be watching and listening to you now i would say be excited about the possibilities be mindful of the need to provide additional supports for um groups that have been traditionally underserved and systemically limited in 
what their possibilities are in that education can drive the future if if we are willing to open the doors of the schoolhouse and the classroom to the world and invite the world in so as an experienced person as a doctorate as a person who is into networking and uh, uh, as a person who is contributing so much to the society especially for the parents and children uh across the country uh, nationally and internationally what is your observation about my work i i am like i said so impressed with who you are and what you've done i mean you, when i talk about the possibilities there's your picture right you are the future and you know if we are in your future sai we're in very good hands so i personally did masters in software engineering uh, also bachelors in computer science and engineering right now i'm doing some devops engineering projects for a uk company and also uh, uh, doing uh, software development for the same company so apart from that that is my full time role that is my full time job engineering is my job apart from that I'm, i become a global communicator and connector and become a global relations uh provider uh, in one platforms experts like you i'm trying to explore experts like you who are from different parts of the planet and trying to bring some positive change uh in the society in order to make uh, uh, uh build a great uh, a global society so how this global project uh, is going to contribute to my growth or my career in coming days and also the impact and the change that is going to create with uh, with this content that i'm creating i i also uh, interviewed uh, uh, a lot of people um, more than 100 countries experts uh, and also recently i have interviewed a couple of experts from nasa so i'm trying to explore uh, all the industries being a technologist i'm trying to explore uh, and uh, also bring educators like you who are trying to change which is uh, education is something that is very important for every a uh, human being to uh, have uh, who is uh, who is going to create or destroy anything anything can be possible with the, <laughs> the knowledge or the information that we are getting but uh, uh, especially people like you who are trying very hard in order to make things happen and uh, also uh, put a word to the politicians who are decision makers uh, uh, creating so many bigger things me trying to bring this out and putting in a platform and showing it to the right people uh, and make them hear these voices so how this is going to helpful for the uh, society and the world and uh, for me personally well for personally you gain a lot of satisfaction from i you know i watched a couple of your interviews and you're learning but you're having a good time while you're learning and your connectivity your ability to see threads across right which is also a function of thinking in terms of symbols and coding and and what a software engineer does and and then you know it will be the possi- like what are the possibilities down the road that as those diverse groups you're interacting with um you begin to pull some of those threads together um you know whether it's going to be um connectivity whether it's going to be simulators whether it's you know whatever that possibilities are going to be so i have no doubt that that we're going to hear your name as one of those thought leaders. So you saying that uh, and uh, telling that uh, I want to believe that. Believe it. Absolutely believe it. And we want 
parents, mothers, aunts, friends, uncles, and kids who are listening so that they see their possibilities as well. So definitely, I want your work to reach everywhere in the world and I want uh, uh, I want uh, most of the people to get benefit with the contribution that you're doing. I'll put your web links in the description of this video also on the screen as well, also on my website as well. People who find my profile and my platforms can able to see uh, your web links and can see can able to see the service that you are doing to the society and the decisions that you are taking in order to make things happen and uh, bring uh, positive changes to the humanity through the education that you are doing. This has been my pleasure, and. Um... You know, I will continue to listen to your thoughtful conversations um, with with others who are wanting to shape the world in different ways. Definitely. They will also approach you for sure uh, uh, in order to make uh, 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 changes in the technology as well, because I have a lot of technology followers, the the technology companies uh, will be watching and uh, listening to you, definitely. And also, a uh, uh, lot of uh, politicians will be connecting to this, definitely. That will, uh, your words, uh, the, the, uh, the subject that you have said, even uh, if it changes one person, that, that will be a great contribution to the society. <laughs> Absolutely. I have thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for this opportunity. It's an honor. Can I put this video and the audio clip on my podcast, YouTube, uh, social media, internet, everywhere? Absolutely. Thank you again. Uh, keep going, uh, keep inspiring and uh, keep spreading the word about the education. And I want uh, millions of people to get a uh, 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 con- uh, get uh, information from you and uh, get uh, uh, educated and uh, be great uh, humans uh, in the society, in the social world. You know, and you and I both want to create as many curious, critical learners as we can at all levels. Definitely. Thanks again for your time. We'll interact in in person when you you come in January. Definitely, I'll I'll put a message to you when you are when I'm there. Absolutely, and I'm off to a board meeting on one of my volunteer boards, so I'm going to sign off. It's an honor. Thank you very much again for your time. Oh, it's my pleasure, and and you have an excellent day tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Be well.